uh, here's the thing that you can argue with how it is, but the way the system is, people are going to get out. Oh, I think 98% of all the people that are incarcerated in Indiana prisons are going to be out. And so when they get out, do you want them better than when they went in? Because they're going to be living next door to you. They're going to be having kids that go to the same school your kids do. They're going to be shopping with you. You're going to be around these people. You can't avoid it. And so I think the question is, do you want them in a position where they're going to be able to have a job, to contribute, to volunteer, to be positive community members? Or do you want all these barriers to where the only way that they can find to put food on the table is to steal? It's not good for anybody. It's really important that we find ways to help people be successful at reentry. I was arrested for a domestic violence dispute. My mom and I got in an argument and I stabbed her and she died. And I subsequently pled guilty to voluntary manslaughter. And so that's what started me on this path to prison. So I, I was arrested in 1994 and I served my time and I was released in 2002. And I did two years of parole after that. One of the things I want to make sure that we do is, is this bat in the box. It's important because it levels the playing field for, for individuals who have a criminal history. A quick example of that is when we went before the state, when, uh, when um, the state was doing House Bill 14, uh, 1482, uh, the expungement bill, a fellow came with us who came to, to testify, 66 years old. He'd been out of prison for 40 years. He served from the time he was 19 to the time he was 26 for a robbery. So the first question he asked was, how long will I be an ex-offender? And the second thing that happened was the company he worked for, when they found out that, that he actually was, they read it in the paper, they fired him. Now, this is a man who committed a crime 40 years ago, has two children, they've all gone to college, he's held positions of respectability and responsibility in our community. Now, luckily, he was, he was able to be re reinstated, but um, with some intervention by, by a few counselors. But the, but the issue still goes. Once you have a box that says, um, I've got a criminal offense, and others have not had to check it, you have an inequality right there. We've got to eliminate it completely and allow individuals to come um, and, and, and be interviewed and have an opportunity to get a job without having to be pre-qualified based on a criminal history that could be 20, 30, 40 years old. We've got to create a level playing field. And then, once you've been able to convey to a potential employer that I've got the goods, you know, I've got the equipment, I've got the skills, I've got the things that you need, then they could ask you any, any question that they want. But not until that point. And at such a time then, you can easily explain, this is 40 years ago, this was 20 years ago. 